Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's virtual book launch and panel discussion on effective trading in financial markets using technical analysis published by Routledge an imprint of Taylor and Francis group authored by Dr. Smita Roy Trivedi assistant professor international banking and finance group at the National Institute of Bank Management located in Pune and Mr. Ashish Kyal author and founder wave strategy advisors and ashish kyal trading gurukul i am rajni dhingra from marketing department at taylor and francis group this book is an illustration of your groundbreaking approach and we are proud of your association with routledge just a little housekeeping before we get started if you have any question during the session please type them into question or chat box i will bring them up post the session if you wish to ask question to any specific speaker please add name along with the question in chat or question panel looking at the time limit we will try to address as many questions possible else we'll pass on your details to panelists to revert to you later this webinar will be recorded and shared afterwards via email with all attendees your mics are muted our respected speakers and panelist dr smita roy trivedi assistant professor at national institute of bank management pune and engaged in teaching training and research in international banking foreign exchange markets technical analysis and algorithmic trading in 2018 she published her first book financial economy evolutions at the edge of crisis published by routledge an imprint of taylor and francis group with mentor dr sutanu bhattacharya her research has been published in noted journals with springer wiley and other eminent publishers mr ashish kyal founder of wave strategy advisors author is a chartered market technician and member of cmt usa he has worked with leading investment banks like lehman brothers and nomura holdings his articles have appeared in newsletters cmt usa international federation of technical analysts reuters and bloomberg and other such eminent publishers publish publications ashish is a frequent speaker on cnbc tv 18 et now bloomberg quint rajya sabha tv and at nibm Akshay Chinchalkar is an MBA from Mumbai University, a chartered market technician, and MSc in accounting and finance from the London School of Economics and Political Science. He is also a global board member of the CMT Association and currently heads the Electronic Trading Solutions Department for Bloomberg South Asia. In his 16-year-old career in the financial services industry, Akshay has been an index options for commodity futures trader, has headed the equity derivatives research side for a regional sell side firm, and over the last 11 years at Bloomberg has been responsible for building Bloomberg's technical analysis, data viz, and quantitative analysis franchisee for the Middle Eastern and South Asian region. with a focus on equities and the fixed income currencies and commodities world we also have shoma choudhry commissioning manager routledge taylor and francis india and our virtual audience it gives me immense pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on behalf of taylor and francis india for today's book launch Taylor and Francis Group publishes more than 2700 journals and over 7000 new books each year with a books backlist in excess of 145000 specialist titles. We are providers of quality information and knowledge that enable our customers to perform their jobs efficiently, enhance their education and help contribute to the advancement of their chosen market. Today marks the release of our latest title published by Routledge India Original Effective Trading in Financial Markets Using Technical Analysis published by Routledge an imprint of Taylor and Francis Group authored by Dr Smita Roy Trivedi and Mr Ashish Kyal congratulations to both of you we are very proud to celebrate this momentous occasion with our guest today we will be circulating order form to all our attenders interested in buying the book with discount code and purchase process and terms and conditions after event 
I would like I would now log, like to start the program today by requesting our authors and speakers, Dr. Smita Roy Trivedi, Mr. Ashish Kyal, and Mr. Akshay Chinchalkar to begin the program to share their knowledge and rich experience and perspectives with all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, you. Uh, Rajini, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction to us all. Um, I have to admit that uh, it is uh, it is such a big pleasure uh, for me to be uh, you know a part of this uh, monumental event, so to say. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing uh, Smita and Ashish uh, for many years now, and uh, it is my privilege, uh, you know, to be a part of their network. This is a matter of pride for all of us, uh, particularly for the technical analysis community. And I can promise uh, everyone in the audience. This is uh, just the start of uh, much bigger things to come. So many, many congratulations, uh, Smita and Ashish. Uh, you've made it all. Thank you. So let's uh, let's dive straight in. I'm sure the audience is very um, eager to know about your journey and uh, you know, how this whole idea came about. So let me start with uh, with that question. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, this this whole idea that uh, that crossed your mind and you know how it all happened about uh, writing a book um, that uh, that will delve into the um, you know a very um, very interesting aspect of the world of technical analysis and uh, what should we expect from here so uh, Sita, you want to go first uh, yeah th first of all thank you so much Akshay and uh, it's been uh, uh, you know a huge learning experience knowing you and uh, it's wonderful that you could join the event today because the idea for uh, you know a comprehensive kind of textbook on on technical analysis was there with me for some time uh, as i was teaching a course in technical analysis for the pgdm students at nibm as also engaging with participants in our training programs where both of you are uh, 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 an important part uh, and of course i was also in this phase developing my own questions research questions on financial markets so at this so uh, juncture i felt a fresh perspective on technical analysis would be much appreciated and uh, of course uh, let me be very honest at the beginning i was a little skeptical as an academic about technical analysis you know because i felt if uh, markets were efficient uh, there's not much forecasting of prices is largely ruled out so there's not much uh, that technical analysis or anything else can do but then i came at this uh, to this very very interesting literature on technical analysis on one hand the very compelling evidence globally of the use of technical analysis by market professionals and also on the profitability of technical analysis uh, so on the first aspect uh, in one of the very famous papers in 2007 uh, lucas menkoff and mark taylor called technical analysis the obstinate passion of market professionals which I which I feel is true, and uh, and then when you combine it with the profitability uh, of technical analysis, the evidence, the very compelling evidence on that, then I started forming my own research questions on technical analysis. Why is it effective, and how to make it more effective? And I really felt that uh, you know we can have a book on the tools more comprehensive details on learning technical analysis using it more effectively as also tying it to the broader perspective of financial market research and uh, luckily of course i've been interacting with a lot of market participants and ashish sir has been coming to nibm for a long time even before i joined nibm he's a regular as an industry expert because uh, actually you have also been with us for so many years as an industry expert uh, so it was uh, it, it was a uh, wonderful that Ashish sir could join me in writing of this book and with Ruthledge of course the second association has been equally wonderful uh, so over to Ashish sir okay so Ashish uh, I want to I want to I want to I want to ask you you know I've uh, known you uh, longer than I've known uh, Smith I remember uh, from your Lehman days and I remember our conversations yeah. on technical analysis even back then uh, but it's hard for me to kind of, you know, when you when when I first uh, learned from you that you were, you know, uh, on the verge of launching your own book, I kind of instantly asked myself, was this idea ever in some corner of your mind like 10 years ago or uh, did it happen just a couple of years ago? How did it 
even uh, even happen in your case okay so so it, uh, akshay to be very honest it started in 2008 right so it was uh, uh, it, it was not an end but a beginning for me because uh, as as we met way back in 2008 during the lehman days there was a bankruptcy that happened in lehman brothers and uh, during that point of time i was always looking at why the short stock price is going down or up but i was looking from more from the fundamental perspective mm -hmm. and uh, that 2008 was an eye opener for me because regularly when i was evaluating and speaking with my seniors they always said nothing can go wrong with lehman and then came the September 2008, and we all know what happened. So the market as a whole knew at that point of time that the, there is something which is going to come out eventually. So that was an eye opener for me in terms of technical analysis. And from there, I realized that a few years back when I was speaking at NIBM also, and uh, fortunately, Smita asked me whether I'll be a part of something like this for writing a book. I said. I do write a lot of research reports and I think it should be okay for me to write a book as well. To be honest, that was my impression. But when I started collating everything, writing my mind out and researching and doing it, it was such a huge responsibility. I realized that I, why did in the first place, I, I, I agreed to writing a book because just writing research article is so different than writing a book. There is a responsibility that you have and owners that you have to ensure nothing is wrong that you have written so that is where the idea actually kicked in i always wanted to write something share across my journey share across my experience in terms of using multiple methods of technical analysis share across what happened in 2008 i thought that i will be sharing across more of 2008 and 2013 when we started writing and coincidentally, the pandemic happened in 2020 and the book was yet to be published. So fortunately, we had the opportunity to put in together the 2000 March 20 collapse. And then we also had the opportunity to put in together post what has happened. One very important aspect that I found was lacking in majority of the books was the practical approach as a trader, how to look at those charts, right? So everyone talked about the theory, but I don't see many people talked about the practical approach with the charts. What should be the trade setup, how to club everything together. And that was the need of an hour. So that is what instigated me to go ahead and say yes to Swita for writing a book because that was much needed. And coincidentally, 2020 happened, which really, really was a very big event for everyone known, going to be known for millennia. And I think the book is coming out exactly at the right time when it is needed the most. So thanks to Smita who pushed me for it. And uh, yes, that's how the entire journey started. I can I can uh, tell you from my experience with uh, Smita. I mean, I've uh, known her for a little over a couple of years. But when she wants you to um, sign off on something, she is unrelenting. So I totally agree with uh, what you just said. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, thanks, Akshay. Uh, but let me ask you because you know you have also been uh, with the markets for so long, and because uh, uh, like uh, with NIBM, uh, because of NIBM, I know you for uh, uh, a long time. What has been? But I, I I don't know what has been your journey into technical analysis and why you came into technical analysis or developed your own expertise so uh, why don't you share a bit on that you know uh, in order to answer this question i will have to go back to my youth but that's fine uh, this was uh, roughly about uh, 14 years ago i mean i was uh, fresh out of um, uh, college uh, i had completed my mba and i was out there to conquer the world so it seemed back then so uh, and then I joined this uh, regional brokerage, uh, joined them um, on the proprietary uh, trading desk where I was uh, one of four people responsible for uh, trading index options. And, um, you know, as I began my career, you know, I, um, day one of my, uh, of my job, I walk into the dealing room and I see uh, four people, one who's obviously the head of the desk, uh, the other whose money I'm going to be uh, betting in the, in the markets. And uh, one person who was uh, doing some uh, strange, uh, you know, things on what seemed like a chart. It was my first ever exposure to a chart. 
he was drawing some weird trend lines and some uh, he was trying to draw some you know I, I think it was a triangle I don't quite remember what it was but that was like 14 years ago but it was the first time that I was actually looking at someone interacting with a chart and then the fourth person was the dealer who was going to be executing all of the deals on behalf of the on behalf of the owner so uh, you know I was fresh out of college uh, armed with uh, a lot of uh, knowledge around uh, derivatives and fundamentals and uh, asset allocation and portfolio management and so on and so forth so uh, you know I used to read a lot of books uh, on the job uh, I was new uh, a month into the job you know I just became very curious because all this other person did every single day from uh, nine to five was uh, was draw some strange you know lines on a chart so out of curiosity one day I went and asked him um, you know uh, I see that you're doing some really interesting stuff I didn't really mean that though I said you're doing some interesting stuff can you tell me about what these lines are why do you keep drawing these triangles and some strange formations and he said, "Oh, Akshay, this is uh, this is technical analysis. It's not for uh, uh, people fresh out of college. You guys tend to be non-believers." So I said, um, "You know, you can you can open out to me. You can tell me what um, um, you know you're doing, and I can probably learn from you and assist you in the future. Maybe just give you a helping hand." And somehow I think um, uh, you know it occurred to me that this person was uh, probably feeling threatened by my motivation to learn technical analysis. So he brushed me off saying, uh, you know, this is not your area. Just focus on what you do. And in some sort of a way, there was some spark within me that told me that um, because he's trying to brush me aside and not, uh, you know, encourage me uh, to learn this strange methodology that he's using. Let me do some Googling, look at what this concept of technical analysis is. And that's how it began. So often you would agree that when somebody, you know, implicitly tells you that you are probably not going to be able to do something. You are that much motivated to actually go into that uh, domain and master it. Okay, that is okay. my story. So that's how it all began. <laughs> that's very interesting. You know, uh, so you know, uh, people from fundamental going into technicals. I think that's that has been the story for many of us. So <laughs> yes. Excellent. So um, you know, you mentioned uh, this just now, uh, Smita. The whole. You know, the perennial debate between uh, the two schools of thought, fundamentals versus uh, technicals. And I want to, you know, pose this uh, question to Ashish. I mean, this one question has haunted uh, everyone, uh, be it a portfolio manager or a technician. Every portfolio manager and fundamental analyst uh, thinks, you know, technical analysis is voodoo. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> black magic. And uh, almost every technician that I've met uh, thinks that fundamental analysis has uh, lost its place in the sun. So this is a debate that will never end. But I want to get Ashish's thoughts on whether he thinks these two schools of thought can actually coexist given today's dynamics. Okay. Yeah. So to be very honest, uh, I think Akshay, it's a very uh, interesting discussion that we can have around this, and the debate can go on and on and on. Uh, but uh, I think there is there is no one should avoid debating the way I see it is if you look at a simple fundamental parameter like price to earning ratio, you can argue that it's a fundamental or technical. My question to you is, do you want to end up arguing whether you call it fundamental or technical or you want to ensure that information is used for either making money in trading or giving you some aspect from investment uh, decision? So for me, Absolutely. anything that can be plotted is you call it as a fundamental or technical. I don't care. What is important is what information do you get out of it? If you plot price to earning ratio and look at it, you see how beautifully it has moved within the channel. You can clearly see it's talking somewhere around 35. You know what to do next once you have that information. So mm -hmm. arguing whether the fundamental works or technical works or those are contrarian or there is a new school of thought with a fusion analysis combine both fundamentals and technicals. I think you have to adopt to yourself, your personality, what works for you. If you are a fundamental guy who is trying to just uh, not knowing technical analysis and trying to demean it, not done because you are losing out a huge opportunity that you might be having there. But if you are a technical guy and you're just trying to figure out, okay, the fundamental things does not work because you might not know it, no, I don't rule out any possibilities. So let's keep the possibilities open. Let's try to marry across whatever works for you as a trader, as an investor. Call it a price to earning ratio, call it a price to book ratio, call it anything and everything. In fact, if you look at an employment generation across, across the globe and simply plot it, you will see a pattern in that. 
if you look at the population growth across the world and plot it, you will see a pattern in that. Everything is patterned, everything is fractal nature. And once you plot that and you are able to see a pattern, you will be able to explore that pattern for future analysis or for taking a trading uh, decision or for taking an investment decision. So for me, plot anything and it's up to you whether you want to call it fundamental or you want to call it technical. So that's what we have talked about in the book also in much detail. Awesome. I can't I can't wait to uh, read the book, but I'll uh, throw this curveball. It's with her. I mean, she's an academic and uh, like one of you rightly said at the start, you know, to convince an academic to start believing in something called technical analysis. And uh, she's nodding her head. So she understands where I'm coming from. So, yeah. you know, Smita, while you were making that transition, I'm sure you had to, you know, convince a lot of people that this is actually a school of thought that has its merits. But how mm -hmm. difficult was that transition? Yeah, so, you know, actually, I get asked this question every time when I interact with students or I think uh, a lot of market participants also when they come for training, if they are, they have traded so, uh, uh, you know, on base, uh, based on fundamentals, they would ask this question. So based on research, what uh, immediately comes up is that uh, in the shorter time frames, technicals is used more. But then there has been a lot of uh, papers showing that a unified approach, many participants use both both and a unified approach to understanding market movement always works better. So like Ashish was saying, we have to build it together. Uh, we cannot ignore fundamentals because uh, if you see the last couple of decades, there has been uh, such an integration happening in financial markets globally. And there's also a very destabilizing influence of news that we see. In that kind of an atmosphere, I cannot ignore what's going behind the chart movement but again what happens is if as a trader on an intraday or a daily basis i try to bring in all those factors into my decision making it would be fairly not, not only difficult it would be completely not possible for me to trade objectively uh, so technical analysis gives you that you know much needed discipline unless you know we have ways to put you know news or sentiment in just a number or a couple of numbers or in this uh, index uh, so unless that happens and there's a robust technique to do it i think we need to have that disciplined approach where technicals can help you cut out all the noise and look at what is in the charts or have it uh, you know use quant to get something out of it uh, where you can trade effectively uh, make your decision making easier so for me i think and as uh, i think we uh, we agree uh, going ahead i think much of mingling between these two areas are needed if we look at the kind of markets uh, that's happening what's your views on that Akshay. You know, I, want to, I, want to, I want to cycle back to what uh, Ashish said. Ultimately, trading success is not defined by what methodology you use. What uh, defines whether you are a successful trader versus someone who tried his best but could not consistently uh -huh. uh, outperform uh, the markets is, uh, is that at the end of the day, you have to make money. Your winners have to exceed your losers. It doesn't matter whether it was technical analysis, fundamental analysis, astrology, or just the fact that you wake up on the left side of the bed every morning, you go long. If you wake up on the right side of the bed every morning, you go short. This is what my first employer told me. You know, he was punting his own money. And he told me, Akshay, you read a lot of books, which is very good. Uh, they'll kind of enhance your knowledge and uh, help you have better conversations with the uh, people uh, you meet in your career. But he said, uh, ultimately, what I want to see is, uh, you can you can tell me, you know, the sun was conjunct Mars this morning, so you should go long. If that makes me money, I won't care. You'll get a bonus. So that's what it used to be. So ultimately what matters, uh, if you ask me, and that hasn't changed in the last 14 years that I've been in the markets, mm -hmm. is that are you making more money than you're losing? It doesn't matter what technology or what um, what methodology you use. That's, that's my uh, two cents. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's brilliant. That's how it is, right? So, People um, end up fighting with each other, yeah. what to call it. You can either be busy making money or you can be busy fighting across the name. Up to you what you want to choose. So Akshay, I want to put across a very interesting question to you again. Which indicator do you think is the most underrated one, a very powerful one, but most underrated or criticized for no or unknown reason? What do you think? A very interesting question, yes. 
Uh, look, uh, I'm uh, I'm not as uh, much a veteran as any of you, but in my limited experience, I can tell you that uh, out of you know thousand plus meetings that I I might have done in my financial uh, career, uh, the most underrated uh, technical analysis tool, if you ask me, is price. What has happened over the last few years is that uh, people have been focused more on fancy looking charts, um, mm -hmm. you know, fancy looking payoff diagrams. Uh, the more the color, the more intelligent uh, you, uh, you know, seem to the opposite party. But what I have seen is that in this whole uh, race to kind of uh, complicate things more and more, just to seem and sound intelligent, people are losing track of how important the metric price itself is. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I've and I've learned this the hard way over the years. So I started off and I started my career you know, uh, looking at technical analysis and deploying it, um, you know, in the markets. I also started with, uh, you know, uh, indicators and uh, so on and so forth. A lot of quant, um, you know, the RSI's of the world and the Bollinger Bands of the world. Now, not to say these things are important, but mm -hmm. if a certain technical indicator is asking you to do something, the decision making uh, or the ultimate, um, uh, you know, trigger for you to buy or sell something should be driven by price. So fine, you look at the indicator. Oh, the RSI is diverging from price. That's great. But is price telling me that it is willing to reverse? If not, then I'm going to cancel out what the indicator is trying to tell me. So for me, you know, uh, somewhere along the way, you know, I know a lot of technicians who've been in the markets for so many years. If you, and you know, someone with like three or four decades of experience, if you ask him, what is that one thing on the chart that you cannot live without? He will say price. But if you look at uh, the traders of today, who've uh, probably had like a, half a decade uh, worth of career in the financial markets. If you ask them, what is that one thing that you cannot live without? In nine out of 10 cases, the answer will not be price. It will probably be RSI or Bollinger Bands. So somewhere I think uh, the importance of price has been pushed back, but I continue to be a believer in the fact that conventional technical analysis, which focused a lot on price and price patterns rather than indicators will never go out of style because that is the genesis of and the, and, and, and the whole backdrop of how technical analysis evolved, the price is the ultimate indicator of, you know, uh, the, um, the, the mingling between uh, the emotions of fear and greed. Uh, as long as you can understand price, trust me, you don't need a single indicator on your chart. And that is what I, I like about uh, Elliott Waits, which is something that I, uh, I believe I'm proficient at, just like you, Ashish. The great thing about Elliott is that it is, uh, uh, for the most part, focused only on price. Agree. So those are those are my thoughts. Okay. Perfect. What about uh, so? Let me let me throw this at uh, at Smita. I mean, uh, firstly, how long have you been in um, in this technical analysis ecosystem, uh, Smita? Has it been uh, roughly about uh, four five years? Yes. Uh, so you know, I am, uh, and uh, then again, four five years, I have uh, continuously tried to you know uh, bridge it with the academic research because, as you said, you know, for academicians still to get into a very kind of believing mode, so I keep on backtesting, keep on backtesting, and uh, I ask myself whether this is uh, you know this is what uh, research would prove or uh, can research support this. Let me add to something you said, which is very interesting. You know, looking at price. I can tell you one thing which I think you'll like. Uh, we have been doing, I know, a survey of uh, uh, the market participants for some time. Uh, uh, luckily, uh, we we get a lot of uh, people at NIBM, so uh, you know, we we keep on asking them uh, uh, several questions on how they trade, uh, what do they do, uh, and uh, uh, there are, you know, uh, when for the Indian market, I did it. I was surprised to find that uh, a lot of people just look at candlesticks, which again is the same thing you know they just you know the, the price movement what is the the candle itself tells you much more on anything uh, uh, else uh, what is happening in the market how the bulls and bears have thought how they have acted uh, so people do look at that and um, 
that's kind of good because as you are seeing uh, technical analysis if we go back to dow theory that's what it, it's all about just look at price and try to get something out of it uh, very interestingly uh, as you are telling like you know as an academic uh, when i try to bridge this with the research i have come across uh, one of the candlestick patterns like uh, a variant of the candlestick uh, charts which is the hikinishi candlestick and i'm sharing this because i have done some research on this so the you know i can back it uh, up with the empirical evidence i have found and uh, i have developed an indicator based on this uh, hikinishi chart which uh, i'm calling hastock you know hikinishi stochastic it gives momentum and trend well and we are finding good results in back testing so i think you know even a hikinishi not you know when i just change the chart to hikinishi the kind of information it can give me on the trend again for any uh, market participant and not only for a trader for anyone who is trying to understand the movement in the markets this is so important just to know the trend so i think you know uh, price i would agree on that so uh, it's a variant of that when you just look at the uh, trend which is there that itself is so potent there is so much of information and of course i think uh, going ahead uh, uh, more uh, of that would be very important uh, yeah over to you ashish what do you feel Ashish, uh, uh, tell us your thoughts. Do you continue to believe that uh, price is uh, is the ultimate thing, or uh, would you say certain things? Because I know that you're a price purist, but um, have certain things in your experience changed your view of that, or do you think price continues to dominate? Okay. Yeah. So I would say that I. Yeah, price is definitely supreme. There is nothing beyond price because ultimately you are buying a price and selling a price. You you are not doing anything else with indicators. So as you rightly pointed out, a lot of people are just too much of focused on an RSI. You can't really focus on an RSI and you can't really understand uh, how to trade unless you understand the price. So price is the most important aspect that you have to keep a focus on. But 2020 something has changed. I realized. Time is the most underrated tool because mm-hmm. 2020, the March pandemic which started, not the pandemic, I will not call it a pandemic issue, I will call it the markets, the way it crashed. If you had been an off even by an hour, you would have lost a fortune or you would have made a killing in the market. So timing the market has become essentially all the more important along with price. So. Time is also a very underrated uh, tool, which is not talked about in the books, in mo- most of the books. There are only a few books where I have come across where people have talked about time. Most of the books have talked about price. Price is definitely important, but if you are not able to time it well, maybe to the day after, uh, for, for example, if you would have gone on a holiday on 10th of March and would have come there and looked at the market of 20th of March, you would have gone crazy. The entire world has changed. So time and price both are very, very crucial and time is a very important element and and we have focused on the time also in the book because and and for the prices, Elliott Wave, Candlesticks works brilliantly and how to combine those things together is very crucial. What I've also observed is many of the people forget about the debate between fundamentals and technicals. People who practice candlesticks says Elliott wave does not work. People who practice Elliott wave says cycles does not work. That's the problem because that's the mind. Mind wants to divide. We want to combine everything together in order to become a successful trader. So I think that what is required right now is a proper mix across the price, across the time, and whatever works that should be applied. Yeah, that's true. I agree. I think uh, you know time is uh, time is uh, as important, if not more important, than price. But uh, you know it kind of takes us back to the roots. When you load a chart, the the two yeah. things, the two elements that you see are price on Y and time on X. You need nothing else. Good. You've summed it up uh, pretty well, uh, both of you. Um, okay. So my next question, and you know Ashish is in the groove, so I'll throw this at him. Tell me about the USP of this book. Why should someone buy this book? Okay, Uh, there are multiple reasons that uh, one should consider buying a book like this. 
now there are already plethora of books on technical analysis and written by the gurus of technical analysis because that is what we have we have read and we have grown up from there okay so those are all with all the respect those are beautiful books that one can go through it but what i have found is a lack of a practical insight inside a book from a trader's perspective that is what i thought is lacking so majority of the book focused on the approach towards explaining an indicator which is very much necessary but what i found is they have lagged in terms of practical application of those indicators a chart is shown but not from the practical aspect of a trader that what should be the entry point what should be the price point how you can combine all of those things together in a in a nutshell you need to combine things together but that that is lacking each of those chapters have been independently written in most of the books and they have not combined those indicators together so a book talked about candlestick independent to the elliot waves independent to the cycles independent to indicators what i uh, what we tried to do is to put across all of those things together and give you a chart with an explanation on a single chart so if you go through the book and eventually you will find that every chapter is being covered again and again again and again in in the form of a practical example i still remember the book when i was i, I we were completing the book that point of time it was april crude was trading at 24 dollars before it went negative the view written in the book we have mentioned about how the view is and why crude has been in negative territory and it should continue to do so it went negative so that's like an anticipated happen we are not forecasting that but it was uh, i i uh, also remember nifty was trading at 9100 levels at that point of time and how market rallied all the way on the upside despite of the pandemic so majority of the people look at the news to take the positions but it is exactly the opposite because the market moves first and the news try to catch up later if someone uh, wakes you up after a year say in 2020 and ask you that there is a huge pandemic the world is facing what do you expect the market to do and show you a chart where do you think the pandemic was on the chart i am sure you are going to point at march and you are going to say that march 20th the pandemic got over but look at what actually happened post march 20 and the pandemic started picking up world over in india in us and the market started going all the way on the upside so that's like a contrary to what you think so that was that's a very interesting aspect that we have addressed in this book also 1987 was a huge crash that we saw world over in the global markets in us in asia india but in 1987 crash was very so uh, very similar to what happened in 2020 now again yeah so the book explains very clearly that uh, if you look at the sectors that bottomed out it was pharma first and again in april we have shown that chart which mentions and shows that the pharma should bottom out in april imagine that to april talked about pharma sector not basis that the pandemic is going to result into profitability of a pharma stock but on the basis that 1987 the first sector to bottom out was pharma in 2008 the same scenario repeated and in 2020 the same scenario repeated so i think the usp of the book is definitely that where we are comparing 1929 with 1987 with 2008 and now the 2020 all of those things together and trying to collate how bollinger bands can be combined together with elliot waves with cycles and smita has done a classic work from the academician perspective how it looks like from an academic perspective i have combined it from the trader's perspective so it's like a marriage between an academician and a trader and my mission is to make academician believe into technical analysis to the core the way smita is doing right now together we will make it happen ashish <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, you made some uh, very, very interesting points, and I've uh, basically picked on two of them. The the first is um, obviously, you know, around um, how uh, you know real life examples uh, when uh, when discussed in a book uh, attract a lot of eyeballs. So I'll give you an example of uh, of a meeting that I was doing only yesterday evening uh, with a client who uh, was thinking of uh, you know uh, getting herself a Bloomberg terminal, and I was uh, you know running her through all of the capabilities in terms of back testing and how you can code. And after about an hour, she stops me and she says, uh, Akshay, I've been in this business for 20 years. I know how to trade. I know how to make money. Uh, what I'm lacking is how to make money consistently 
I understand the concept of back testing and uh, you know factor modeling and blah blah blah. Show me with real life examples as to how you can bring all of these things together because that is the only thing that will help me make money and make money consistently. So I totally agree with what you said when you when you started off with your comments. The other thing is you know this whole uh, concept of whether events actually cause moves or whether it is price that moves first. And you give the example of uh, the pandemic in 1987. I think Robert Prector and uh, the work that his socioeconomics institute have done in this respect is absolutely phenomenal, right? Absolutely, actually. Since you pointed out his name, I would just like to share across Robert Prector has edited the Elliot Wave chapter in the book. So, wow. yes, yes. That is yeah. uh, really amazing. Smita, your thoughts, take it away. Yeah, no, like what you are saying is absolutely both of you. What you are pointing out is correct. I think uh, uh, this book, if you, if you ask me what's the USP of this book, I think it has been that we have tried to bring together that conceptual clarity with the practical examples. So, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a juxtaposition of the academic and the uh, market practitioner's viewpoint. Uh, uh, conceptual clarity in terms of uh, because technical analysis I believe is also how much uh, comfort uh, a, a trader feels with his own tools. You know, every uh, trader has his own set of tools which work best for her or him. Uh, so I think that uh, given that thought, we have stressed on each concept to the core. So I have you know, gone into the details of uh, not only candlestick or uh, classical patterns, but on averages. Like, you know, when we say moving averages, that's such a powerful indicator. But uh, now we, we tend to use the same kind of averages over and over again. So we have introduced the other averages. Where does a, a adaptive moving average you know, come from? And at least when you get a clarity, you know when to use it. Because uh, there are different moments at which different things work. Uh, so uh, And then uh, we have stretched it into uh, going into backtesting. Because I think given uh, when I look at uh, technicals in a bigger perspective, like Akshay, you are uh, telling as an academic, you know, when I try to see it in the bigger perspective of financial market research the risk management so as a trader you know how important managing your own uh, money is and you know i think that's most important when you're putting your trade the trade setup so we have stressed on that and uh, on the bigger perspective when we look at the risk management when we look at risk mitigation when we look at how much i can support with empirical evidence all the things i'm doing so we have tried to bring it therefore into back testing and i think going forward also you know to bring that kind of discipline uh, now there will be a lot of move because not everyone will have that uh, uh, perfect focus when they see charts we are swayed by news as much as uh, you know even as a technical analyst uh, would want to believe that you know, uh, you know this this chart is all that matters very few because uh, ashish uh, sir i have seen uh, you know he is very particular about this on the chart akshay of course you have explained in uh, class so many times and uh, I have seen that focus but it's not always possible and if that happens then uh, to make it very disciplined to make it very objective there would be a kind of movement into algo trading so we have moved into you know finally into back testing into an introduction to algo trading I should say also so you know uh, like and I should like Ashisa was saying the last chapter in fact when pandemic happened we, we didn't have a chapter 11 we just had till 10 and then we were to write the conclusion but then things were so interesting and we were seeing a replication and you know, it's not only about uh, the uh, from the technical analyst point of view it's from anyone who is interested in market patterns anyone who is interested in financial market research you know it's just that how much of uh, you know, pattern movement can uh, make sense. So that that uh, we wanted to incorporate, and therefore the entire thing about all the um, sectors or how Nifty and uh, Dow Jones was moving, all that uh, we tried to put together. So I think uh, for me the USP is that. Uh, the uh, conceptual clarity with the practical application and of course uh, the putting it into the bigger perspective of financial market research so it's of interest to everyone that's that's i i would think we have uh, tried to attend attend that so so and you know i want to i want to i want to make a i want to make a quick comment some some very very interesting uh, observations there from you smita 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I was just uh, reminded of this of this first interaction that I had when I went to a B school. It was my first ever talk on technical analysis, but I started with a balance sheet. I showed them the balance sheet of this company, and uh, they looked at the numbers, and I said, uh, uh, "I need only one response from you as a group. You either." So you have this information. You you tell me whether it's a buy or a sell, given the information that that's available to you. So they looked at the balance sheet. They took like 15, 20 minutes. I distinctly remember, and they all had one response. It was a buy, buy with everything that you've got. So then I said, okay, good. Your response is taken. It's not about whether it's the right response or the right response or, or the wrong response. So I took that response, and then I showed them the chart, and the chart was making a series of lower highs and lower lows. And I said, if you ask me, I'm not going to buy the stock. And everyone was shocked. Uh, and uh, the the collective question I could see it on their faces was that, are you looking at this one strange line that's making lower highs and lower lows and telling us not to buy despite this company having a fantastic balance sheet? I said, yeah, welcome to the world of technical analysis. That's that's what it was. That was a good decision not to buy. <laughs> so uh, so that's uh, that's just one very very uh, nice experience that I had as I started off engaging academia in the world of uh, technical analysis. Awesome. You know, I wanted to ask you, Akshay. So, where do you see? Because you know, both of you have uh, been there for a long time, looking at charts. And where do you see technical analysis going? You know, maybe ten years down the line. Where where do you think it's going to go? And what kind of things will be important? This is the most difficult question uh, from this interaction today. I don't know where I'm going to be in ten years. Forget where the world of technical analysis is going to be. But uh, I can promise you one thing, it is never, never, ever going to go out of fashion. And I'm talking about conventional technical analysis. Now, in the last uh, three years, given the spurt in algorithmic trading or uh, mm -hmm. uh, trading uh, undertaken primarily by machines, quant trading, uh, huh. people have begun to question the relevance of discretionary trading, where the discretion as to whether to buy, sell or do nothing lies with the trader. Uh, people have also started doubting the ability of conventional technical analysis to have as much an influence in the decision making process compared to the kind of influence it had maybe 20, 30 years ago. I believe that um, you know you can program the machine to do uh, all it wants to do, but ultimately, uh, who's programming the code into the machine? It is the human. And the human is always going to be driven by discretion. Right. So, I mean, that kind of settles the debate once and for all. Uh, conventional technical analysis is always going to have its time in the sun. There will be tools that will come and go. But I think the basic premise of, you know, uh, price and time interacting with uh, each other on a chart that will uh, continue to foster and do pretty well. That's uh, that's what I think. What are your thoughts, uh, Ashish? So uh, I think that the body of knowledge is only going to expand with the way technology has been moving and the information flow, Akshay, is so heavy. What has yes. happened, the problem that has happened is the information and the noise that has that has been generated because of the technology uh, is, is tremendous, it's humongous. So I, I see that there will be need for an algos in order to filter out those machines can trade as long as you know what they are doing. The machine does not have an intelligence of its own, but definitely an algo is required because you want to filter out the noise and you want to understand what the overall perspective is given the current market situation. But discretionary trading will definitely not go away. This is a very similar discussion, which if you would have gone, gone back way in 2000, 2002, where people talked about there is a technology boom, this is going to change the world, this is going to change the way financial markets are going to move, it's no longer going to have crisis again. It was said by in 2000, by the, in 2002, if need be, uh, by, by the known Fed chairman, I'm not naming him, we will drop money from helicopters if need be, but the crisis will never happen what happened in 2000. And come 2008, we saw what happened in 2008, right? Something like that should have been disposed, uh, should have been like 150 years apart, but the market's greed and fear which moves the market is always going to be there. So whether it is 1929 or it's 2008 or 2020, it's the emotional greed and fear that moves the market. 
how do you measure those greed and fear is by the way the markets uh, by the way of charts that you see it on the screen now uh, algorithmic traders might say i'm trying to code something so uh, uh, one more thing that i find very very tricky right now is ma majority of the people are behind algos but they have no clue about domain so if you are if you are behind algos and you have no clue about the domain of that how are you going to trade okay because it is very important that you understand what is the domain what is the uh, what it goes inside the price why it is fluctuating what is happening that is very crucial but if you have no understanding of that it's not going to happen so the body of knowledge the way i see is moving from here on is in terms of uh, a, a more systematic approach towards technical analysis a more quantitative approach but everything is going to stay discretionary is going to exist elliot waves are going to exist because that is more discretionary and uh, algorithmic traders uh, are going to increase day by day because that is what people think is the easiest way of making money no you need to understand the domain you need to understand the pattern and that patterns can then be coded into an algorithm that is what is required one very very important aspect i think is going to happen post 2020 we are nearing the end of this um uh, year what is going to happen is uh, risk management is going to take a leap fold increase every fund house every hedge fund every trader has to rely more on risk management because risk is the only only tool which is what you know price expectation of the future is an unknown pat unknown target that you are deriving it has not yet happened that's an assumption that's a forecast that's an assumption but what is there on the chart right now is only the risk management so risk management is going to be increasing and i think going forward over the next 10 years risk management is going to be the focus top focus is going to be risk management uh, the next is going to be trading psychology is going to be becoming much much more important because this pandemic is going to result into a mental pandemic also is what i believe because there have been lot of robin hood traders who have jumped in into the market exactly at the wrong time without understanding the risk that they are dealing with so so it's like you have given a matchstick to a child who is playing with it without knowing its power that's what is happening so going forward i think risk management and and, and algorithmic trading is going to be there but discretionary is never going to go away come what may maybe a robot can take over but discretionary is going to remain so don't worry about that over to me thank you sir add more right uh, she is from the academic yeah, background sir. and i have just yes yes so we are waiting for you to respond <laughs> yeah right so i know it's a, it's a very uh, you know uh, I, i mean it's it's very see it's uh, like uh, there is a probably uh, when we look at it there's a lot of contradiction between academics and what technical analysts is saying but then we see we are all saying the same thing so you know i couldn't agree more uh, to what both of you said because obviously when we look at algorithmic trading this is what i tell my students so uh, time and again you have to your own strategy you are the person who is coding so unless you understand it it's not going to work and uh, of course the other thing is what uh, uh, both of you said what ashish stressed on the greed and fear sentiment in the market and uh, we have seen that with pandemic we are going to see it more i think going forward this kind of mingling of what fundamental analysis we do of the market sentiment is also very important that we take it in in a quantitative robust fashion you know not not uh, just looking at news as it comes in uh, so there are a lot of uh, sentiment indices which are already uh, developed you know or fears index and then there's economic policy uncertainty index and they give a good clue to the market movement but uh, again we we cannot probably stick to only news going forward because there's lot of sentiment which is being reflected on social media for example so So there is a need to take it all together, and when we look at uh, the post-pandemic movement, I can share with you a little bit of research. When we what we started after the pandemic, uh, looking at how the sentiment of uncertainty is behaving, we are seeing this so much. Uh, there is uh, such a strong uh, kind of uh, you know we we can linkage we can establish with the financial market movement, and uh, that that's very very important. Maybe going ahead, we are, we can. 
merge it together, tie it together, make technical analysis stronger uh, on that front. So uh, I, I see that uh, kind of happening because uh, with technology, it has, there has also been a integration across markets and you know we, we now come to know of news happening in some remote corner uh, through social media coming in you know in, in a few seconds it's reflected and of course all of that uh, uh, changes the greed and fear aspect uh, of what we have been discussing so i think yes uh, that that kind of thing will be there so uh, it's again uh, putting on uh, uh, i think the academic viewpoint also when we look at uh, understanding the markets not only for for the market participant i think even for the regulator now sitting when they are trying to regulate this kind of market and trying to think what they're going to do with the volatility it would be so much important to understand both from the point of view of the technicals uh, fundamentals the sentiment everything that is going to be very very crucial uh, so yes an integration is, that's i think uh, very much essential going forward Exactly. I think uh, sentiment is going to be. You know, it kind of uh, ties to what I want. Yeah, it kind of ties in very well with. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to to sum it up, uh, given the given the kind of uh, views I've heard uh, from both of you, I think in the future, even though the front end might be dominated by machines, uh, there is no denying that at the back end, uh, behind every machine, there will be a human. So that is never going to change. Yes. Absolutely. Good. So my 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 next question, and I'll uh, start with uh, Smita. Is this book going to launch the next bunch of celebrity traders world over, just like the <laughs> total experiment did? <laughs> what do you want your your audience, your listeners, to kind of take away from from this book? Yeah. So you know, this is a very very interesting question you posed. Yes, I and uh, I would want uh, this book to. Uh, you know, reach out to not only the uh, audience who is trading, of course, yes, I want them to be more equipped with uh, all the tools, with knowledge of all the tools. Knowledge is always very, very powerful. Uh, and also the, uh, also know the application of it, also know where all uh, technical analysis is, uh, where technical analysis exactly stands in the entire framework of financial market research. But I would also want this to uh, create, you know, since you said, you know, celebrating kind of trader also kind of create or uh, reach out to audiences who would want to understand the market uh, from this viewpoint as well uh, so i think this book is uh, not going to be restricted to the trader alone for anyone who is uh, interested in financial markets who would want to understand financial markets better technical analysis gives a very very important clue through its emphasis on patterns ultimately at the end of the day what technicals is telling you is that uh, the psychology matters you know the individuals who make up the market matter it is what they have done the kind of trades what they have done which is again uh, impacting the market which is again impacting uh, the economic decision making as a whole because they are the same people you know market microstructure approach when we look at it they're the same people who are also taking economic decisions uh, so uh, you know it's it's uh, technical analysis then becomes a way to understand markets better through understanding how each human being in the market reacts how we all behave in the market what is our psychology how it gets reflected in the prices so i think uh, that's what can be the key takeaway from the book? Yes, Ashish. Ashish, your thoughts. Okay, so the key takeaway it's a, a very big question because there is a lot, lot, and lot to take away. What we have done, both Smita and I have tried to put in our years and years of experience in that book. So, explaining that in just two minutes of time is uh, a cruel thing to do but time is time right so the book focuses on time that is what i want to talk about it focuses on time it focuses on price it focuses on marrying across different methods together along with it and it is a book which is going to be an eye opener for every single reader because there have been a lot of questions you are going to raise up your mind your logical thinking about the markets are going to be questioned 
what you have thought for centuries or not centuries you have not lived for that long what you have thought for uh, years long you might be ready to get questioned on that because that's what the book ends with a note very clearly suggesting if you still think that the markets are driven by uh by, by news and events it's going to be questioned that big time so i'm not saying news and events are not going to influence the price but it is not the price uh, it is not the news that are going to be resulting as the only component why the price is more very importantly uh, that you have to get out of this book is to become a very wonderful trader everyone i have seen as a trader are the ones who are the most anxious species on the planet okay they are the most anxious ones because they do not have a disciplined approach to trading or investment they keep jumping around on every stock tips that you get from a friend or every news that you see it on the television and then they jump in just to do what buy exactly at the high and sell at the low that is what the majority of the traders have been doing and that book is going to change your perception for good only if you are open to understand it in totality but if you start again getting your ego in between and started uh, start thinking okay this works this does not work you are going away from the reality the reality is whatever works for you works so uh, so so the key takeaway is it is going to make you a very very good trader a disciplined one i'm not going to comment whether you are going to make money from tomorrow onwards if you read the book in one day and i want to make money from tomorrow that's not going to happen because it's a journey so the book is a journey a a a tool which is which is going to explain my journey how i started and how i have come across till to really always any always and cycles and algorithm it's a journey of smita how she has been an academician for decades long and adopted technical analysis not left uh, quantitative and those aspects of statistical things but adopted so that journey is explained very detailed fashion by smita it's a marriage between an academician and a trader and i think that is what we is needed so we have been successful in converting not converting but accepting uh, an academician to talk about technical analysis and my mission is to ensure more and more people especially at the levels of decision making should be accepting technical analysis for its uh, for, for its uh, power and strength and not treat it like some a central that is very important and that book is going to do exactly that so i think there is a lot to be taken away from the book and every reader is going to be ending up with a lot of questions in the mind but in the right direction good so on that note uh, i i am pretty uh, sure that everyone's you know anxious to get a copy of the book whenever it does uh, hit the bookshelves and uh, i'm also very confident that you are going to get a lot of questions from people who buy this book so make sure your uh, phones are not on silent mode okay so on <laughs> on that note uh, ashish and smita i'm i'm so pleased uh, you finally made this book see the light of day i wish you all the very best uh, this book i have no doubt is going to be a roaring success and uh, we we look forward to uh, hearing uh, more from both of you thank you so much and uh, over to you guys now yeah thank you so much akshay i think uh, of course the book has uh, been a very uh, uh, long and uh, tedious process also and uh, like uh, ashish sir has been saying we have uh, uh, tried to make it as uh, good as possible for everyone who gets a copy uh, so but we have a fairly you know large number of people who have supported us on this journey uh, in trying to make the book very good so i think I I'll uh, request Ashish sir to, you know, we we would like to thank them on this platform once again. Uh, so Ashish sir, if you can begin. Sure. Uh, so the firstly, I would uh, uh, like to thank Smita to push me to get into uh, something like this. So it wouldn't have been possible uh, uh, without her and and we putting together every every effort that we have put in for getting this book out. Uh, and then uh, now I like to thank across. uh robert factor so without him the elliot web chapter wouldn't have been what it is so a big thank for that not only for endorsement but it is his work his 
he's, he has been an inspiration for me right from uh, from the very beginning of 2008 when I started learning about Elliot West. His work has been an eye opener, so I can't uh, uh, thank less uh, anymore. And then it has been a beautiful way the way he has been uh, across. And to be very honest, when I first wrote that to him that I have an Elliot Wave chapter and would you like to have a look at it? And the way he was excited to talk about Elliot Waves in the book, it was simply fabulous. So a big thank to Robert Factor for endorsing and for being a mentor and, and uh, on this journey for me. Uh, Mark Galvis, how can he, I, how can I not thank him enough? Because he has been a fabulous person, a friend, a close associate, and he has written extremely, extremely well for the book as well. So uh, I would like to thank Mark Galvis. He has been a guiding force because there are times in the life of a trader or an analyst when you go little off and you're not sure are you on the right path as what you are doing. And he has been a guide whenever it was required. Uh, I would like to thank Julius D. Kampner for writing wonderfully uh, for the book again. And uh, he has been a uh, founder of IRG and he has done fabulous work. And he came across to endorse this book. So thanks to him as well. And also I would like to thank Kamlesh Jain for he has been with me during the Lehman days. We saw the bankruptcy together. The Nomura took over. A lot of things happened. So I would like to thank uh, Kamlesh also for for uh, writing uh, or endorsing this book across. So uh, that's uh, the thanks I want to give from the endorsement side. And I think uh, Smita, uh, your words on uh, on on the endorsement, please. Yes, and uh, yes, on the endorsements and on the support, I mean, there's so much to share. Uh, firstly, I would want to thank uh, Sri uh, Gurumurthy Mahalingam, uh, whole time director Sebi, uh, because uh, of course uh, his uh, encouragement for the book and of course the endorsement he has given to the book. And uh, he has been a mentor to us, to my faculty colleagues at NIBM for such a long time. It's so much of, we, we are so lucky to have him as a mentor. And I would want to also thank Professor Lucas Svinkoff uh, because his writing, his research on technical analysis is what got me interested into technical analysis. And he was so kind enough to uh, uh, look at the, uh, the kind of integration I was trying to put in the first chapter and uh, give his comments on that uh, and uh, you know, uh, to, to uh, help me back it with the research. And uh, a big thank you to Ernest Chan. Uh, whose books on algo trading, quant trading got me interested into those areas, helped me understand it uh, first, and uh, of course uh, for his kind endorsement of the book, and uh, you know, they, they, their encouragement for our writing has been very, very crucial, so we cannot thank them enough. Over to uh, you, Ashish, uh, to continue in the acknowledgments. Yeah. So the next acknowledgement, this is from a very personal front, goes to CMT Association. I have not talked about it so far, but I want to point you one thing. 2008, I read a research report published by someone in Lehman Brothers, and there was a CMT designation written next to him. When I went across the designation, I was not even sure if I want to get into technical analysis. I thought, let me just go and have a look at it. I approached the association and try to understand what is a CMT all about in those days of 2008 and Akshay will agree with me that was the days when it was a drop in a desert I would say not even in an ocean it's a drop in the desert to find a technical analyst and that to an association and that's oh. why my journey started so had it not been for the CMT association I wouldn't have been what I am here right now. So uh, I would like to thank them enough. It is only because of their ecosystem that they have created across yeah. that I am able to be doing what I am doing right now. So that's, I want to thank. Then on the personal front, I would like to thank uh, my guru, Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, because of his meditative practices, I am able to juggle around a lot of things that I am able to do. And it's very important for a trader. Uh, 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 it's very crucial that you are able to keep your mind same very very important so it's possible only because of him and then i would like to thank the team members of my office it wouldn't have been possible if they wouldn't have been able to take care of the work that we have to do for ensuring that things should continue the way it continues right without them it wouldn't have been possible 
and I would like to, on a very personal note, thanks my family members, my father, uh, Hari Shankar Kyal. He has been a guiding force and inspiration. He has been able to fight all the ups and downs in the life, and he has been an inspiration for every one of us. I would like to thank my mom, Kiran Kyal, and she has been a wonderful female. Without that, it's not possible. So we wouldn't have been here without them. So that's very, very crucial. I would like to thank my brother Somesh, uh, uh, my sister-in-law Nita, and uh, of course my wife Moon Moon, because she has been the one uh, who has been always pushing me. I still remember I met with Akshay in 2008 with my wife Moon Moon, and she was not sure what I will do in my life, to be very honest. And she pushed me to do CMT. I did my CMT, and then she kept on pushing me across. But now she is regretting because. She has pushed me too far. <laughs> okay, so I would like to thank her because without uh, her support and I have devoted a lot of time. So in 2009, post my marriage in 2008-9, I have been on the market and on technical analysis more than spending time with her. So it's very crucial that she understood. So uh, that's uh, I want to thank. And all the kids in my family, Josh, uh, Arna, Prithika, and Pratyush, without them, uh, it was not possible because you need to maintain that balance of work and life and they have been a guiding force for doing that. So I would like to thank each one of uh, uh, each one of the family members. And of course, I would like to thank the, uh, the publishing house. Without them publishing this, the book wouldn't have been out. Over to you, Smita. Thank you so much, Ashish. And yes, true. There are so many people behind a book because it's such a uh, tedious and long journey when you are there uh, on the book. So yes, I have also uh, a lot of people uh, to thank for the support that they have given. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sri Rajiv Avankar, who is uh, ex CGM Bank of Baroda, for his very kind feedback on the chapter, especially chapter 10, the structure that I was doing on backtesting and algo. Uh, you know uh, that helped me uh, structure it well and of course a big thank you to the publishing house to the Rutledge team and uh, this is my second collaboration with them I clearly remember in 2018 when the when my first book was just getting published I had already started discussing with Shoma you know how would uh, you know this kind of a, a book be how uh, how can we you know uh, design it and she was so encouraging she is there I'm very happy she is there today uh, here on the panel. So a big thank you to Shoma uh, Chaudhary from Rutledge and uh, to the entire team, to our very patient editorial team, Rimina Mohapatra and Vita Bajaj. And of course, the marketing side uh, today, Rajni is there, Rajni Shailesh, uh, a big thank you to them. Uh, I would also uh, uh, now begin on a personal note and first thank uh, the Institute, uh, National Institute of Bank Management, NIBM, because you know, uh, I have got to know of market uh, practitioners through training uh, activities that NIBM does, and you know, uh, both Ashish sir and Akshay sir, you know, I have uh, you have been coming here for a long time before I joined, in fact, and I have uh, met you through NIBM, and uh, I think that sums up the kind of very unique intersection in IBM presence between the academia and the industry practice. I think that's that's wonderful. Uh, that's what allows an academic like me to develop an interest in technical analysis and try to give back and weave it back to uh, the research. Uh, so and IBM, of course, is uh, uh, you know, my faculty colleagues at NIBM have been very important because every day interacting with them, I learn more, I know more, I teach well, I teach better. Uh, a special thanks to Dr. Elizabeth James, Dr. Uh, Dipali Krishna Kumar, uh, Dr. Richa Varma Bajaj, and Dr. Gargi Sanati. They have uh, been a constant support for me. The NIBM support team, we have the admin uh, section, the PGDM section, the training program of this section that allows us to work better so big thank you there and of course uh, to my students uh, at NIDM there are lots of uh, my uh, now professionals uh, 
my former students, the alumni uh, is there uh, here. I saw them all. Uh, they uh, messaged me that they have registered. Uh, it's you know interacting with them over the years. So I've been taking this course for the last five six years, and every time when I interacted with them, when I shared with them the notes, their feedback shaped. So most of the chapters in the book has been shaped completely by you know their feedback on it. So I I cannot thank them enough, and they're very bright, very intelligent. What they say. You know, uh, helps us to understand things better. So, uh, and of course, NIBM also gives you a very unique opportunity to interact with market participants. So, there I have learned so much uh, every time I try to share my knowledge with them. Uh, all the case studies that I have gotten in this book has been part of class discussions, and their feedback on it was very crucial. All the uh, uh, Python files, all the Excel files. Files, you know, we have gone over in the class, and what they, their, uh, the, the queries that came help to make it better. So a big thank you there, and of course, uh, none of this uh, would have been possible without the support of my family. Uh, so uh, on a very very personal note, I would want to thank my husband Akshay Trivedi and daughter Ashmi uh, for their constant support and encouragement. Akshay, uh, you know, his uh, support, his uh, guidance, his motivation has been so important for. For me, as I have for everything I do, and of course for this book, and he has always motivated me to excel, to do well in whatever I am doing. His feedback on my writing, on the presentation, has been so crucial for this book. I of course cannot thank him enough, and the support he has given me has been immense. Uh, Ashmi, of course, is uh, an inspiration. Uh, she is a blessing. So uh, uh, you know, interacting with her helps me see the world from a better perspective. Every day I learn something from her. And uh, I think now that she has grown up and she discusses a lot of things, my research is also made better by the questions she poses and the kind of thoughts she has. Uh, this book also for me uh, you know, traversed a very difficult uh, uh, time on the personal front because while writing this book, I lost my uh, mother last year uh, to cancer. So she was very happy, very excited with this book as she always was with whatever I was doing. And I really today miss her a lot. And I hope I make her proud. And I'm thankful to my parents, Aaron Roy and Shubra Roy, for uh, because uh, it is for them that I'm here. And uh, yeah, on this very personal note, I would uh, want to say that, yes, we have tried to bring together in the book uh, a lot of very interesting facets about financial markets, technical analysis, is a way to understand uh, the markets better. And I think uh, that uh, that kind of mingling of the research and technical analysis tools is going to be very important going forward. Uh, so I think, yes, uh, that uh, uh, with that, I would, uh, uh, from my side, I would pass it on to Akshay. Okay, so uh, um, that I think kind of uh, uh, sums it up from uh, from our uh, panel discussion here. Once again, thank you so much, uh, Smita and uh, okay, Ashish. And I I would like to thank Akshay also on a closing note because he has been a True. fabulous person that I have known him for over the years and years of time. And thanks for agreeing to be a part to of the panel. Yes, thank you so much, Akshay. Really I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, say no. I mean, you're very, very uh, dear, uh, you know, uh, to me. And uh, I cannot uh, but wish you all the very best in everything that you do in the future. So, uh, Absolutely. And, and, uh, I am expecting a feedback of the book from you, Akshay, as soon as you get a copy of it. And uh, that will be fabulous. Only, only if you only if you only if you send me an autographed copy of the book, will you get feedback. Exactly. <laughs> okay, that would that would be an order. In fact, Factor has also asked for an autograph copy. That shows a sign of modesty. Can you imagine that? Yeah, <laughs> that's really an honor. Absolutely. Uh, awesome, afternoon. guys. Uh, Shoma, ma'am, uh, you want to take it away? Yes, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chinchalka, for handing this over to me now. Good evening, everyone. 
Thank you once again for taking time for this very interesting book uh, launch this evening. Um, on behalf of Douglas, Taylor and Francis, I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to all those who made this possible. First, the panelists, Mr. Akshay Chakrabarty, Electronic Trading Specialist, Bloomberg South Asia, Dr. Smita Reuterbedi, our author and faculty at NIBM, Mr. Ashish Kher, our author and founder, Waves uh, Strategy Advisors, and Ashish Kher Trading Group. Thank you for the and for the insightful and interesting discussion. And thank you, Ashish, for coming to this wonderful book. We would also like to thank uh, Sri Ganesh Kumar, former Executive Director, Reserve Bank of India, Dr. Mridul Sagar, Executive Director, Reserve Bank of India, Dr. Uh, Dukhavandhu, uh, Chief General Manager, State Bank of India, Sri Sanjay Nair, Chief General Manager, State Bank of India, Professor Vikas Srivastava, Professor Ayan No, Sri Sriram Ram Narayan, former country head, Thomson Reuters, South Asia, and the NIBM faculty and family. And of course, dear listeners, thank you all for joining in. It's great to have all of you with us today in what seems to be the new normal. We are pleased to publish this volume, which provides a comprehensive guide to effective trading in the financial markets. It blends practical insights and research updates from professional trading, uh, investments, and financial market analysis. As we've been hearing, it's brought to you by a rare generation of an academic and a practitioner. And this book will hopefully prove to be essential for not just the professionals, but also the scholars and researchers of finance, economics, and management studies. The book reflects the time-honored tradition at Routledge and Taylor and Francis of publishing works that make a difference. Our content spans all areas of humanities, social sciences, behavioral sciences, science, technology, and medicine. We have published in a range of formats as well. And our Routledge and Originals program extends the Routledge tradition of excellence through academic publishing in social sciences and humanities to India and South Asia. I take to thank the panelists once again, the authors and our esteemed guests for taking time out to attend the launch of this very topical volume today. Last but not least, I also take the opportunity to thank once again uh, Smith and Ashish and their team uh, that has helped us to put this together. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with all of you. I would also be ready if I did not mention my colleagues, Ramina Mahabatra, who worked with me on the book, and Sailesh Kumar Shahi and Rajni Dhingra, who made this book event possible. Thank you once again for joining us. Stay safe and good evening. Let's uh, sign so off now. Such a pleasure. Uh, take okay. care and uh, be safe. You. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah. When, Congratulations when once again. How, Ashish, how, to, how to purchase the book is what Rajni is going to. I Yes. About for the most yes. First of all, thank you all for sharing your valuable thoughts for conducting such an insightful session and experience oh, with us, oh, our oh, audience and industry experts. Uh, I am excited to share with you all that we have received so many comments that it's an extraordinary and excellent discussion. They want to purchase the book. They're very, uh, you know, they they're very happy that you know uh, they are here with you. They're happy to meet, e meet you, Ashri sir, sir, and they have mentioned this thing in the chat that they are following with you, and they really want to know the book price. And everyone wants to know that how we can get the author signed copy. So here our trick has worked. Now in this uh, virtual times, what we have done is that we have introduced the virtual autographs. And this is by our author Ashish Kyal and by author Smita Roy. And we would be sending across the uh, signed author, the virtual author card uh, to you all the attendees uh, in your inbox uh, with, along with the session recording. Thank you so much, so much, all three, for the vote of thanks. And just a reminder to all our attendees if you have any questions, you can still drop mail to us on the thank you note email or on this email itself that you have received from GoToWebinar. And we would be sharing your questions with both the panel with all the panelists to revert to you uh, thank you everyone but before we wrap up the session here i would like to remind you which i have shared with you personally in the chat box also that we would be sharing the session recording and order form with the discount code launch 20 launch 20 is the discount code to avail 20 percent discount especially introduced for our virtual audience and our uh, uh, for our virtual audience 
as we all know today is the global release date of the book and especially south asia edition has been introduced for just rupees 995 book is available for pre order on trivedikyal.com you all are aware about it trivedikyal.com hurry up and order your copy today to avail 20% discount and use code launch20 book should be also available on amazon.in which is the india website soon and you all would be notified via email to purchase via amazon too stay tuned to know more updates uh, and thank you so much to all the panelists to all the speakers and to all our virtual audience thank you for your wonderful participation and your patience we appreciate you being here and we hope to meet you again have a happy weekend thank you so much jyoti thank you thank you very much bye bye